meeting to order for Lycomico County Council Legislative Session 2023-08 for uh, April 18th, 2023. Those that would like to stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. Our Father, Father, Father who art in heaven, 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 and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Entertain a motion from council to approve the consent agenda. I'd like to uh, make an amendment to the uh, consent agenda, if that's okay. Um, Councilman Wynn? Yes, I would like to add maybe that we send a letter of uh, opposition uh, or support to, uh, to Senate Bill 001, um, going to the governor's desk for signing. I think it's probably pretty important that we uh, show, the, show our community how we, uh, how we stand on our, on our rights to, uh, to bear arms. Um, is this uh, is this one of the items that are in the uh, consent agenda referencing minutes? Because all we're doing right now is approving minutes. Okay. Can I uh, add to the agenda? Um, never had anybody add to the agenda. I would probably need a motion. I think it it may be best, James. I wouldn't say we would do it right now because I, I would really want the council to have something in advance where they have enough time to to review it to know exactly what decisions they might need to make. Is there an urgency to this? Yeah, because it could be signed today, this week, soon. You know, it's, I think it's best that we put it, put it forward as soon as we can. Um, I, I, be, I would like to do it, but I, I just, again, I don't know if the council has, um, has had the time to review exactly what it is you're considering. Um, I certainly wouldn't have a problem, if it's okay with council, to just um, bring it up uh, when we get into the work session. Yeah, no, that would be good to have it in a work session. Because it would most likely be a... a it, we could do it as an informal consensus anyway, couldn't we, Mrs. Hurley? Yeah, I mean, I think it would need to be added to the agenda. You would need a motion and a second to add it to the agenda and then have that discussion. Yeah, yeah you make a good point. All right, well, then, if you would make a motion to amend the agenda. Yeah. Include what it was you just said. I'm making a motion to amend the agenda. To include what? To include the, uh, to, to a work session on a Senate Bill 001 for, uh, my opinion, for opposition for it. Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, motion second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, uh, motion's carried. Uh, we will add to the agenda a discussion in the work session in reference to Senate Bill 001. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the entire speech or whatever it is. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Remind everybody, if you have a cell phone, you may want to turn it off. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we have a, uh, excuse me, um, we had a motion a second uh, as far as a work session for Senate Bill 001. We'll go back to uh, entertain a motion from the council to approve the consent agenda. To move. Second. Second. Any uh, corrections, changes, comments? I, uh, I, I think maybe we should, I, in another work session, maybe we could go over our council budget again. I just This would be relevant to the consent agenda only, okay? When you get into uh, individual comments, you can certainly bring that up, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is just approving the minutes that were, um, that were prepared for the council. Okay. On, on Any discussion on changes or corrections or comments in reference to the minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Consent agenda passes. At this time, we have a lot of proclamations. Uh, first proclamation is to recognize the month of April as Autism Awareness Month. Uh, we have Mr. Barry Johansson, Mary, uh, Mary Beth Belgi, and Clayton Belgi, and uh, with the Lower Shore Autism Community. And we have Mr. Darren Lombardo, the Delmarva Parent Teacher Coalition, 
And we will have uh, Councilman uh, Jeff Merritt preparing the uh, proclamation. If you all would like to go up there, be our guest. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, and we would like to present these two proclamations. Um, they both read the same, so I'll read them once. Uh, Autism Awareness Month, whereas autism spectrum disorder is neurological and developmental disorder that affects communication and behavior and is an urgent public health crisis that demands support from all levels of government and whereas the symptoms of autism may present themselves in a variety of combinations and can result in significant lifelong impairment of an individual's ability to learn, develop healthy interactive behaviors, and understand verbal and nonverbal communications. And whereas the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports that one in 59 school-aged children have been identified with autism spectrum disorder, and whereas the Wicomico County is committed to ensuring that people living with autism have access to lifelong care and services needed to pursue their full potential. Now, therefore, the Wicomico County Council and County Executive are honored to take part in the annual observance of Autism Awareness Month in the hope that it will lead to a better understanding of the disorder done this 18th day of April 2023 and signed by our County Executive and the Wicomico County Council. because we're missing one signature. We have one of our oh. council members out today. Okay. We will mail them to you after she signs them. That'll be so for all proclamations, correct? Correct. Yeah, so all proclamations today, we hate to tell you this, but you're going to have to give them back to Mrs. Hurley <laughs> um, after this has been presented because we have one council member who was sick today and didn't get a chance to sign them, and we'll mail them to you. Thank you. Well, we're, we're honored and uh, grateful for, for this uh, proclamation. Last week... Interestingly enough, we got we got a, a proclamation from uh, Governor Hogan that came, and uh, the same thing for us. So twice this week, once from the state and once from the local government, and that's very very heartwarming to us, and we appreciate all your support. You know, we you can't talk to anyone these days without mentioning. You know, they always ask me what I'm into now, and I say, well, I'm, I'm working with this organization that we've started, and uh, nine out of ten times. My neighbor, my cousin, my my daughter, my granddaughter. You know, it it my grandson. It just uh, it, it is epidemic, and uh, we appreciate your support and thank you very much. And by the way, this is not Mary Beth Belge. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Beth couldn't make it. This is uh, Mrs. Doremus. Uh, so we're uh, we're happy to be here and thank you very much. And she is our uh, secretary, and Clay Belge is our uh, our vice president. Thanks. For, thank you again. I just wanted to say it's an honor. Thank you for recognizing Autism Awareness Month and the people in the community that stand up for our children and our families. I just wanted to say a couple things. In the community with autism, we have families that find it very, it's a very, uh, uh, burdensome on the families and uh, going through the school system it's very difficult special education and I just want to say for families that feel like they're alone or they're meant to be an isolated incident I just want you to know that there are wonderful people in the community that stand in your corner and so it's just about reaching out we're here for you so thank you thank you Mr. Lombardo
Next proclamation we have is a proclamation to recognize the Wicomico County Rising Star winner. I believe Lauren Bass should be here, right? There she is, great. Uh, Prince Street Elementary, presented by Councilman James Wynn. You can come forward if you'd like. This is uh, Bill and Teresa McCain's award, is that correct? Yeah, we'd like to thank them also for uh, sponsoring this. Bill used to be a council member for many years. All right, this is a, uh this is a this is a proclamation to uh, well, for Lauren Bass. Uh, whereas new teachers who successfully completed their first year in Wacomico County uh, Wacomico schools and are now in their second year were eligible for the Rising Star Award, which was established to recognize and support teachers who are excelling in their uh, first years in the profession. And whereas Miss Lauren Bass, a teacher at Prince uh, Street Elementary School was selected as a finalist for the Rising Star Award, and whereas after a careful selection process, Ms. Lauren Bass was named the 2023 to 2024 Wacomico County Wacomico Rising uh, Star Award winner for showing in, 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 in <laughs> ignuity uh, and amazing service uh, to, her to her students in school. Now, therefore, the Wacomico County Council and uh, County Executive congratulate Ms. Lauren Bass for being named the 2023-2024 Wacomico County Rising Star Award winner. So we have proclamations for Wicomico County 2023-2024 Teacher of the Year finalists. Uh, Vice President Baker will be uh, reading the proclamations. We have uh, Dr. Nan Richardson, Kristen Biddle, and Victoria Oland. How are you? So I'm going to do each one individually. The first one, Dr. Nan Richardson. Dr. Nan Richardson, 2023-2024, Wacomica County Teacher of the Year finalist. Whereas Dr. Nan Richardson, a music teacher at Beaver Run Elementary School, was chosen amongst many outstanding educators to pre represent Beaver Run Elementary School as a 2023-2024 Wacomica County Teacher of the Year semifinalist. And whereas after an extensive interview process of the semifinalist, Dr. Nan Richardson scored in the top four amongst her peers and was named a Wacomica County Teacher of the Year finalist. And whereas Dr. Nan Richardson joins a distinguished group of Wacomica County educators who have been recognized for demonstrating outstanding leadership, dedication to the education of our children, and professional achievement. Now, therefore, the Wacomica County Council and the Wacomica County Executive congratulate Dr. Nan Richardson for being named a 2023 2024 Wacomico County Teacher of the Year finalist. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you individual or yeah, just go through? Playing. Okay. So next I have Kristen Biddle, 2023-2024 Wacomico County Teacher of the Year finalist. Whereas Kristen Biddle, a third grade teacher at East Salisbury Elementary School, was chosen amongst many outstanding educators <coughs> to present East Salisbury Elementary School as a 2023-2024 Wacomico County Teacher of the Year semifinalist. And whereas, after an extensive interview process of the semifinalist, Kristen Biddle scored in the top four amongst her peers and was named a Wacomico County Teacher of the Year or finalist. And whereas, Kristen Biddle joins a distinguished group of Wacomico County educators who have been recognized for demonstrating outstanding leadership dedication to the education of our children, and professional achievement. Now, therefore, the Wacomica County Council and the County Executive congratulate Kristen Biddle for being named 2023-2024 Wacomica County Teacher of the Year finalist. <laughs> Last but not least, <laughs> Victoria Oland, 2023-2024 Wacomica County Teacher of the Year finalist. Whereas Victoria Oland, a math teacher at James M. Bennett High School, was chosen amongst many outstanding educators 
to represent James M. Bennett High School as a 2023-2024 Wicomica County Teacher of the Year semifinalist. And whereas after an extensive interview process of the semifinalist, Victoria Olin scored in the top four amongst her peers and was named a Wicomica County Teacher of the Year finalist. And whereas Victoria Olin joins a distinguished group of Wicomica County educators who have been recognized for demonstrating outstanding leadership, dedication, to education of our children and professional achievement. Now, therefore, the Wicomica County Council and the Wicomica County Executive congratulate uh, Victoria Olin for being named a 2023-2024 Wicomica County Teacher of the Year finalist. Thank you. Sure you do. You guys are finalists. <laughs> Pitcher first. <laughs> well, hello, my name is Nan Richardson, and it's an honor to receive this world this award. So, thank you for your support. Uh, Mr. Rogers once said that in every neighborhood all across the country, there are good people insisting on doing good things and it is wonderful to be part of such an excellent community in Wacomico County who is insisting on having a good start for the young. Um, going off of that, what an honor this is not only to be part of the top four to represent Wacomico County and all the amazing educators here in this county but also East Salisbury and representing the amazing educators and leaders and all the personnel that work with our children every single day at East Salisbury School. Um, this is such an honor. Thank you. And echoing their sentiments, it's a blessing and honor to be here and to represent a school system um, that I'm a graduate from. I'm working at the school that I'm an alum alumni of, so it's a blessing and honor to be here. Um, and I hope that all of us can continue to represent our school system um, in a way and continue to make positive change for our students. Thank you. Next, we have a proclamation to recognize the 2023-2024 Wicomico County Teacher of the Year. Tara Martins, is that correct? Martins or Martens? Martens. Martens. Congratulations. Math intervention teacher at West Salisbury Elementary. It's being presented by uh, Councilman Josh Hastings. So before I, uh, usually whenever I see whoever the teacher of the year, as soon as it's announced, I like to go and go on Facebook or wherever and check out the comments and see what people say. Usually I know most of the teachers. Um, I got to say the comments were fantastic. Uh, some of them being that there couldn't have been a more deserving individual, a person who is, uh, cares about the whole of the community and the whole of the child, who is more prepared than anyone else, who is, uh, always has the best lessons put together. Um, so I'll just lead with that and then say, uh, uh, whereas Tara Martin, Martens, a math intervention teacher at, at West Salisbury Elementary School, was named the 2023-2024 Wicomico County Teacher of the Year, and will represent Wicomico County Schools in the Maryland Teacher of the Year Recognition Program. Whereas Tara has taught in Wicomico County Public Schools since 2012, has been a math intervention teacher at West Salisbury Elementary since 2018-2019 school year. Whereas she writes songs connecting music with math for students, she serves in math intervention. She also co-chairs West Salisbury's Instructional Leadership Team and Family Engagement Committee, initiated a Title I summer tutoring program for grades one and two, worked for Home Hospital, and served as a tutor at HALO. Whereas Ms. Martens is a past recipient of the Baxter Enterprises um, Mech Educator Award for West Salisbury Elementary, and is a member of the Wicomico County Education Association, the State, uh, County Edu or State Education Association, the National Education Association, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Now, therefore, the Wicomico County Council and the County Executive congratulate Ms. Tara Martens for being named the 2023-2024 Wicomico County Teacher of the Year done this day, April 18th, uh, 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> Before we get a picture, I'll invite you to help say a couple words. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm still in shock. <laughs> 
I just do what I think is best um, for my students every single day. Um, and I really want to thank you for this amazing honor. And I want to thank um, everybody that has helped me throughout my career. Um, the people that hired me, a lot of my administrators that hired me, um, my first job was at Beaver Run. They were there to kind of support our welcoming parade that we had at West. And um, if it wasn't for them taking a chance on me, I would never be where I am today. So I appreciate everybody that believed in me. And I also want to um, really thank all the teachers at my school and administration because I can't do any of this alone. Um, we have a lot of different events and things we put on at school, and it's those teachers, those IAs, um, everyone that helps put on all of those events to try to bring um, our community together. So I just want to say thank you so much, and this is such an honor. Thank you all. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of great work in order to uh, just to rise to that level of leadership and, uh, and recognition. So we don't take that lightly. We want to make sure that uh, you are recognized, and we thank you so much for everything you're doing for, your, for the uh, school system and for the children as well. Uh, thanks again. The uh, next proclamation we have is uh, for an individual who I know very well. I like to call him uh, Mr. Wicomico. Uh, this is for Mr. Ed Urban to recognize his years of service to Wicomico County. Mr. Urban, good to have you here. The presentation is going to be by Mr. Steve Miller, the Director of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism. Good to have you both here. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're here to recognize Mr. Ed Urban for his years of service. Um, I will tell you uh, before reading this that uh, there's not a voice or a person uh, whose voice was respected more than Ed for, for many decades um, on, on our, both of our boards and I know throughout the county. So um, it is an honor to, to be able to uh, read this uh, certificate of appreciation to Mr. Edward W. Urban. Recognizing and honoring his dedication to Wicomico County as a leader, Mr. Urban has served on the county's personnel board, charter review committee, and for more than two decades was a leading voice in the Civic Center and Tourism Commission and the Recreation and Parks Commission. He has served on the board of trustees for Peninsula Peninsula Regional Medical Center, SWED, and the Salisbury Area Chamber of Commerce, also working with conflict resolution for Salisbury University. In addition, Mr. Urban is also the founder of the local Falcons Youth Sports Program, of which my children participate, uh, which provides recreational opportunities in multiple sports and serves over 1,000 families throughout Delmarva. <coughs> He's coached high school at the high school level for more than 12 years continu and continues to be a volunteer coach in the Falcons Youth Programs. On behalf of the citizens of Wicomico County for Mr. Urban's long-lasting service and legacy, we thank him and extend everyone's best wishes for his health and happiness. Signed this 18th day of April 2023, signed by our county executive, Julie Giordano, and the county council president, Mr. John Cannon. Thank you. To be perfectly honest with you, when Steve invited me to be presented with this award, I felt humbled and I wasn't going to come. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, when I thought about it, this was my perfect opportunity to thank the Wicomico County and the city of Salisbury. You have to realize that I came here 38 years ago to open up a company. And it would have never happened without the supports of the Henry Parkers, the Paul Martins, the Frank Morrises, the committees that I worked with, with Frank Perdue and Richard Henson and Dick Hazel. They made it enjoyable. And I've always told people that you can't appreciate Salisbury and Wicomico County unless you came from someplace else which I did. I have seven children that went through the school system and they all went on to college with college degrees. Six of the seven came back to Salisbury because that's what they think of Salisbury. One is a doctor, one is a principal, one, the rest of them are teachers, one owns a business and another one runs a business. 
So all I can say is this means a lot, but you can't believe what's in my heart for this county, and I thank you all. Mr. Mitchell, good morning. Uh, yes, this is a uh, legislative bill. It's a public hearing on legislative bill 2023-02, uh, which is an act to amend chapter 225, the Wicomico County Code, titled Zoning, Part 8, titled Special Standards for Particular Uses, Article uh, 20, titled Uses and Standards Enumerated, and part six titled accessories and principal uses article uh, 18 titled principal uses sections 225-67 uh, titled uh, table of permitted uses designations and chapter 174 of the Wacoma county code titled nuisances article one titled nuisances abandoned vehicles and firearms section 174-1 titled Nuisances Enumerated to regulate the installation, construction, location, and size of solar energy systems in Wicomco County. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. At this time, we open the floor for public hearing on Legislative Bill 2023-02. If you have any comments you'd like to make in reference to this bill, come to the podium, please state your name, your county residence, and your concerns. That concludes the public hearing on Legislative Bill 2023-02. Entertain a motion from Council to approve Legislative Bill 2023-02. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Legislative Bill 2023-02 passes. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Good morning, Ms. Hurley. Okay, good morning, Mr. President, council members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the first item on the agenda this morning is a public hearing on resolution number 52-2023. This is to approve the release of a portion of a forest conservation easement containing 20.0 acres on 4054 Colbert Mill Road, parcel 96, tax map 58, owned by Keith Johnson and Tammy Johnson. Um, a public hearing notice was posted on the county's website, and Mr. Frank McKenzie with the Department of Planning and Zoning um, is here if there are any questions. This time we open the floor for, for a public hearing on resolution number 52-2022. Again, if you have any comments you'd like to make, come to the podium, please state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. That concludes the public hearing on resolution number 52-2023. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 52-2023. Second. 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 We have a motion second. Any discussion? Mr. President? Yes. I just want to make note that we did, uh, the Wicomico County Natural Resources Conservation Advisory Committee, we, uh, NARCAC, we are, uh, did actually review this to, to make sure that it was, um, that it made sense uh, and, and that we were clear on what was happening, that it's just a uh, removal um, of the, of the Forest Conservation Bank. So this is not compared to like a, a removal of an easement itself per se. I think that's important to note so folks know that we're not, uh, we're not removing an easement. This is just the ability for them to be able to bank, uh, to use the, utilize the bank. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Hastings. Mr. McKenzie, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I think uh, Mr. Hastings did a good job explaining what this is. Uh, I if you want to, if you want to make the comment, Grab that mic for us. Thanks. Good to have you here. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you. For <laughs> um, I think Mr. Hayes did a good job there explaining the fact that this is a bank, that they're just releasing a portion of the bank uh, that will be taken out of uh, forest conservation easement. He will be maintaining, you know, a, a still a major portion of that that he will be keeping in a forest conservation easement that he will be able to sell credits to other developers that may need it. All right. So. Great. Thank you. Any uh, questions? 
Seeing none. All those in favor of resolution 52 2022 23 say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. Okay, next is a public hearing on resolution number 53 2022. 2023, and this is to authorize the county executive to execute a lease agreement with Federal Express Corporation for property located at the Salisbury Ocean City Wacomico Regional Airport. Council had a work session on this request on March the 21st, and a public hearing notice was posted in the local newspaper and on the county's website. And Mr. Tony Rudy, our director of aviation, is here if there are any questions. This time we open the floor for public hearing on resolution number 53 2023. If you have any comments you'd like to make, come to the podium, state your name, your county of residence, and your concerns. Seeing none, that concludes the public hearing on resolution number 53 2023. Entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 53 2023. Moved. Second. Any discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried, resolution passes. Hey, Mr. Rudy, I'd like to thank you for your, your work on this. It was not easy, and same with Mr. Davis. Thank you. Okay, next is the submission of the fiscal year 24 operating and capital budget. Um, council has on their table a binder um, that contains that fiscal year 24 budget, but we do have our county executive, Julie Giordano, and director of finance, Pam Olin, here to give you a brief overview. Thank you. Good evening. Or good, good morning. morning. Yeah. Good morning, good morning County Council. I present to you for your consideration the operating and capital budget for Wacomico County fiscal year 2024. Per the charter, the budget in front of you is a balanced budget that reflects not only the top priorities of this administration, such as public safety, education, and the recruitment, <clears throat> excuse me, and the recruitment and retention of our employees, but it also tackles the financial pressures in a fiscally prudent and socially responsible manner. We started this process hopeful, but soon realized that we were going to have obstacles. One obstacle is the $487 million write down that is taking place this year and next. 87 million uh, this year pertaining to sales tax and 400 million next year pertaining to income tax. As you may or may not know, income tax has become our largest revenue source, surpassing property tax due to our revenue cap. We were also hit with the minimum wage uh, increasing to $15 per hour come January. Some of you all are small business owners, and so you know the effects that will occur when this happens. This caused a 15% increase in our lower salaries, and we were unable to continue the trend of a 15% increase across the board, as that would have endured a cost of $9 million. We know this will be dealing, or we know that we will be dealing with some compression issues, but we plan to address them in the years to come. And due to these financial concerns, we reached out to all department heads and asked them to make some slimming adjustments to their budgets. Almost every department or entity did without hesitation and complaint, and I want to personally thank each one of those department heads for doing so. And I will now turn it over to Pam Olin uh, to further discuss some of the highlights that you will see as you go through the budget. Thank you. So um, Pam Olin, Finance Director, uh, this budget is balanced. It has about a $20 million increase over last fiscal year. Um, the majority of that increase is due to um, PAYGO capital projects. Um, as we said during the uh, CIP process, we looked specifically at what we could afford in debt and with the interest rates going up, we made a, a decision to concentrate on using our savings account for capital projects for fiscal year 24. About $17 million of that increase is PAYGO capital projects. Um, additionally, um, I'm putting it on the record that we will have to amend the cap, the, this plan currently anticipates actually doing more PAYGO than what you saw in the original CIP that was adopted um, based on current interest rates and the projects and the length of time that those projects would be in service. It doesn't make sense to bond those for 20 years um, and pay the interest rates for the, and with the amount of savings that we have in our account, we're using about $10 million of savings. Um, the rest of the funding is coming from um, um, uh, the fact that our, our, we have more a little bit more income than actual um, cost, as well as uh, using some American Rescue Funds for one of the projects. Uh, additionally, the Board of Education requested an increase of a million dollars above their maintenance of effort number, and we have uh, placed that in this budget. 
uh, salaries, as the executive has stated, we have looked at all salaries across the uh, departments. Most levels are getting about 3%. There were certain areas that uh, the sheriff's office, the state's attorney's office, and the bottom two tiers of our uh, pay scale all had to go up because the starting salary for our bottom two tiers were below $15 an hour. And so we needed to move those two up, and that's more than than 3%. Um, the, um, so one thing to bring up is literally this morning at 9.30, 30 minutes before I was walking in the door with you, we got an email from our healthcare broker and they had given us a range of what health insurance rates were gonna increase for next fiscal year for us. They told us three to 5%. We loaded 4% in the budget. This morning at 9.30, they told me it's gonna be 5%. So I'm sitting here today knowing that our budget doesn't have 5% in it. I will have that calculation for you in about by, by the next meeting as to how much that impact is, but we will need to do something about that because uh, especially in the small departments that don't have a lot of turnover, um, they'll be short in the amount that we have for health insurance. And so I'm, I'm letting council know that again, at 9.30 this morning, I got told that the number in here is, is not sufficient to cover what's gonna happen come September 1st. And then one other thing, as we have done in the past, and I'm also putting this, is this budget is built with rate increases for certain things at Rec and Parks. Um, so as we uh, go into this budget, um, we're asking for council at the end when we do is to approve a resolution to increase certain rates for certain projects, or not projects, certain um, fees for uh, renting, par renting parks, renting uh, slips, that kind of stuff. I, I don't have the list with me, I apologize. But it's uh, programs, and primarily the program cost has to go up because we will be paying $15 an hour for people to be at those um, uh, events. So. Those are the highlights. Um, as I, as uh, the executive stated, the budget is balanced. It has um, all the information in it about the different uh, departments. Um, we did add a police accountability department in this budget, um, giving us some flexibility to allow us to um, fund travel costs, computers, that kind of thing for that department and be able to track it separately. Any overall questions? I am available for whatever work sessions uh, council has to discuss this budget in further detail. Questions from anyone? I have one. Um, you said we were. Are we using ten million dollars out of our reserves? Yes. So what's that bring our reserves down to now? Uh, I'm sorry, I did not bring that with me. I think we went up about twelve million dollars in the last fiscal year at the end of twenty two. So we're we're still ahead of the tw of where we were at fiscal 21. All right. Yes. In light of the $15 an hour uh, minimum wage hike, what's the impact with com wage compression? So the bottom tier we had to go up, I think it's like 13.5%. Uh, the, the next tier up, um, which is M32, I think it's about 7.9%. And then the tier above that only went up 3%. So again, um, in this budget, um, in the budget uh, attachment, you will see the wage scale. So you will see that those bottom three tiers are close. Um, but it was it was either, if we had to do the 13 point, 13% um, across all, as the executive stated, it was about $9 million between a salaries and benefits that we would have had to um, absorb and this budget year we didn't feel we had nine million dollars to do that and um, as I have stated in the past um, the goal is never to use your savings account for your daily costs so that's why I did point out that we're asking for 17 million dollars of paygo and only taking 10 million dollars out of the savings account so again we still, with our revenue increases and with um, everything else going on, have, an, uh, have a, an ability to pay our daily costs with our current revenues. Thank you. 
I know, I know we had a discussion during the capital improvement program. We, we knew we were coming into an 8% interest, and um, I, I know we expressed concern at that time on how we were going to manage our capital expenses. Um, I, um, I, I understand why you're, why you're proposing this as far as uh, going with PAYGO. Uh, my concern is, I think the, I don't know if it's still the same figure, but I know at one time, maybe uh, six months ago, the total reserves were about 75 million, I believe, and um, unrestricted were about 55 million, if I'm right. I, I'm sorry, yeah, I did not okay. bring, I, I, I apologize, I did not bring that number yeah. with me today. I just, I just am concerned that, you know, if, if those figures are anywhere near close, we're looking at almost a 10 percent. Uh, I think our number is higher than that. I, uh -huh. I will say that in discussions when we met with the, uh, the bond agencies, um, we felt that it was more prudent to utilize this growth in our savings account now when we still had these needs. And again, if you look at the CIP that was submitted, um, we very specifically stated that this was the, kind of the last fiscal year for some kind of big numbers. Next year, the numbers drop off because we told people that, you know, the, the funding availability would not be there. We would not have the savings account. We would not want to be tapping debt significantly because we would not be eliminating debt. Basically, everything on that capital improvement plan, and again, there's a capital tab in, in your budget showing what things are PAYGO versus or how much is PAYGO and how much is not. Um, the only two things we're borrowing money for is the Mardella middle and high school renovation and a couple projects at the airport. Everything else is going to be uh, pay-go funding. We even, um, in the original CIP, we originally stated that we would do a couple roofs at, uh, for the uh, school system through debt and I am requesting that we put that through PAYGO so that, first off, the money is available earlier to the school system because it would be available come July 1st if approved. And additionally, it, um, we would not pay interest costs on that money while we have a, a savings account available to us. Okay, um, so you're saying that for the most part, the long-term commitments are wrapping up this year anyway. So it's not as if we have ongoing obligations we had we had we have ongoing obligations always with the county, right. but we had specifically told um, the department heads that this was kind of the last year for availability of a significant amount for both debt and paygo. And so, if you look at our capital improvement plan from um, February that got approved, the numbers dropped off significantly for next fiscal year because of. Uh, the economic condition, the fact that our debt was not, we weren't having a big retirement in fiscal 24, so 25, the availability of it, of the borrowing capacity for us. Um, so again, this has been in, in the work since I've basically been sitting in this seat. We've been monitoring where our debt is going and where our liquidity is available to us. And at this point in time, our best liquidity and our best usage of our funds is not to pay the high interest rates, but to utilize our savings account. You have to go back to the bond market. Um, do you think there'll be a great impact in reducing our reserves? Because I know our bond rating is usually based very heavily on what our reserves are. So um, again, based on the last meetings that we had with them, um, they look at our, our debt rating, but again, the fact that we are able to balance our budget without utilizing um, our savings account for our operating costs, mm -hmm. it's just for our, yeah. and, and we have significantly added to our number in the last several fiscal years. So um, <laughs> it hasn't upgraded our rating to have that savings account. Um, our biggest economic pressure to the bond market is the fact that we, uh, we can't um, tax our way out of this with real estate taxes. So um, based on my opinion, this is literally my opinion and <laughs> no one else's, um, I don't think we're going to see a bond rating increase and I, and I really don't think we'd see a decrease by doing what we're doing. Well, you know, we've been very fortunate. The public needs to know we've been very fortunate the last couple of years to borrow more money than we ever have yes. because we got it at ex absolutely excellent rates that can be a long time before they come back. And that's why, again, um, made the decision that it made more fiscal sense, and I believe the bond market would view that as well. It makes more fiscal sense not to borrow at the higher interest rates 
Um, Maryland is a state that requires you to invest in very um, safe investments. Most of our investment income comes from something called uh, the Maryland Local Government um, Investment Pool. Um, they don't want our governments to be um, on the hook for things that happen in the market w with risky um, investments. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, our interest rate has started going up with that, but it still doesn't earn you the same amount that's going to offset the fact that we have um, you know, a debt at a 5 or 6% interest rate. Yep. Um you mentioned a million dollars over maintenance of effort. I know the school the school system's under the same pressure that the county is as far as minimum wages and trying to keep up with yes. all the expenses. But when we raise we raise that bar that million dollars, doesn't when we give that million dollars doesn't that raise the bar as far as the um, maintenance of effort next year? Yes, I will say though that the actual maintenance of effort due to um, enrollment was actually coming down slightly. So the million dollars isn't actually a full million dollar increase. I, um, let's see if I can figure that number out real quick. You don't have to get too much into detail if you don't. Um, so so um, last year our maintenance of effort number was 49135 They're asking for a $50 million for 48. So um, that is an increase of about $1.3 million, but majority of that, it, I mean, it's been negated by the fact that their enrollment numbers have gone gone down, and Kerwin is built into these numbers. Well, I guess I know in the past we have worked a way to give the board more money without raising the bar as far as the maintenance of effort. And with the pressures that we're going to probably be seeing from the state with the write downs, is there any way to do that this year? Um, not in the request that they are asking for. Um, primarily the request, and we also, um, with our meetings with the Board of Education, the deadline for those one time things, last year was an unusual year because of the, uh, the, the disagreement between two state agencies as to what maintenance of effort was. Um, March 31st would have been the date for one-time funding uh, requests. We did not submit anything. What they are asking for is the ability to, you know, pay increased costs like we have increased costs, pay for increased fuel costs, pay for increased costs across for their employees. Um, and those are going to be continuing costs anyways. So the intention is, is that, yes, we understand this is going to build our maintenance of effort starting next year. Um, and be our new level, but those costs exist for the Board of Education, and we felt they were important to fund. Yes, Josh. Just a quick comment. I, I appreciate you put, putting this together, and looking look forward to diving into it. Um, uh, I did want to say, of, <laughs> of course, um, it's always important to look to make sure that we're you know as we're looking forward that we're not. Um, you know, that we're not too reliant on one bit of funding over another. Um, and I always make this note and I'll continue to do so. You know, we're, um, if we add up our, our the, the, you know, the money that comes from state funds or, you know, we have American Rescue Plan in here, 4%, disparity grant, 8%, other governmental 2%. So we're talking about 15% of our budget um, in a precarious situation in the sense that the federal government has, uh, as of New York Times yesterday, we have until June-ish, uh, where we could default on our debt, and if the you know, federal government for defaults, then Maryland is going to pull their funds back. So I just always recognize, I think it's important to do so, that we are resilient in our um, planning going forward for how we, um, you know, for, uh, for how we bring in our income. So um, I always think it's important to fix the revenue cap in order to allow ourselves to be more resilient. So um, putting that on our radar as things to continue to consider. Thank you. Any other, uh any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. We appreciate sure. it. We thank you. Thank you. thank you. I think I. Um, Are you? I'm kind of available for the next couple ones if you'd like me to stay. Sure. Sure. Yeah, we'd like to have you there. I uh, will. Ms. Surly. Okay. So the next item for business is resolution number 54 2023. This is approving a grant in the amount of $129,541.55 from the Maryland Department of State Police for radar trailers with license plate readers 
And we have Major Todd Richardson here with the Wacomico County Sheriff's Office. I heard that. I heard that. Really entertain a motion from council to approve resolution 54 2023. Second. Any discussion? It's a grant for license plate readers. Just want to give us an overview. Uh, yes, they're my major. Uh, well, I'll start off with one of the complaints that we receive most is speeding complaints. Uh, they're the ones that come in on the non emergency lines. They're the ones that we get bombarded with when we're out to lunch. Uh, the county as a whole always believes that there are speeding problems in their particular neighborhoods. Uh, we have one uh, speed trailer right now that was bought in 1995 and it is a maintenance uh, heavy vehicle. The reason we were offered this grant is the state was putting it out to some of the bigger comp uh, police departments and some of them just didn't take advantage of the grant. So they contacted us basically last minute and said this money is available. Uh, if you can get it spent, we will reimburse you immediately um, upon even just a purchase order to purchase these license plate readers that are also um, radar trailers that can be placed anywhere in the county. Uh, I want to make one point very clear. These are not speed cameras. They're simply to get the community to realize what their speed is and adjust their attitude. These aren't the readers that go on the trunk of a police car. No, these are trail like our normal uh, trailer that goes on the side of the road, tells you what your speed is. Two of them are like that. The third of them, third one is a uh, speed only, and uh, it, can, it can also be used as a uh, message board for special events or whatever. So the ones on a police car, they'll read they'll read a tag number and report if somebody has an outstanding. It would immediately report to the MDT with the inside the car. The, the, this does not have this. Uh, the information goes immediately to the cloud. The cloud uh, MSP will be taking care of all the reporting as far as state and federal reporting. We don't gain anything as far as work volume out of this, other than moving the trailers from one spot to another to increase awareness about speed. Good questions. Is it, is it just one trailer? No, it's three total. Three total, okay. Uh, two are LPRs and the third is a sign trailer. So like for the county fair or all those things, we can put, put it out early. We depend on the state. I know County Roads has a couple. And with the bigger events, we're borrowing them from everyone that has one. All right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Anyone else? It did, can I ask it? Did you say this was a tag reader? Yes. I can tell you the city of Fruitland has that, and they're saying it, it makes a huge difference. They will get a message from the state police or the sheriff or something saying they're looking for a certain thing, and within a minute or two, they can say they just went through Fruitland. Yes, that's why I told you it reports immediately to the cloud. So if there was a, a crime committed and they had a vehicle northbound, we could place this out there if it picks up the tag. Uh, they can put a tag into the system that it would auto automatically flag, a bell would go off at someone's desk, and they would pick up the phone and say, the vehicle you're looking for just crossed you know, Route 50 into Salisbury. Well, great. Oh, we appreciate you pursuing these grants, too. I know it's not easy. Any other questions? All those in favor of Resolution 54, 2023, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Resolution passes. Okay, next for your consideration is resolution number 55-2023. This is authorizing unanticipated revenue in the amount of $179,578.73 for the Wacomico County Sheriff's Office. In a motion to approve resolution 55-2023. Second. Second. In discussion. Any questions? It's a long list. It is a long list. Uh, we try not to come to you uh, as often as possible. The first thing that I like to make very clear, these are not taxpayer funds. These are either funds that were raised from selling older police vehicles, older police equipment. Some of the equipment that was sold was forfeited originally, used by us, and then uh, became additional equipment that we put out on gov deals. We use gov deals and a the county auction site to, uh, I guess, give the best clarity on uh, what we're selling okay uh the one high dollar item that you see as a uh that came in was the hundred and seven thousand dollars from the state for sex offender registry 
the reason the number that is so high is because we didn't get our payment until the next fiscal year from last fiscal year because of COVID and so many people still working from home. Normally the payment's made in October. We got it in July, I believe, and then we got the second one in September. So, I thought um, it was very, very well done, uh, very well itemized so the public recognizes. We even had one item that they were recognizing as a $14 Sale through, through government was the government gov deals. Gov deals. Uh, yeah. So well, the, the good part about when we put it on gov deals, there's no uh, possibility of any collusion or anything, or and it just happened to be a small item that didn't bring a lot of money. Yeah. Uh -huh. A lot of times, what we try to do is group those in larger groups, so I it's guess. less paperwork. Yeah. I kind of laughed when I saw that. Yeah. Um, I don't ever micromanage you, Major, because I know which I know how good you are and what you do. Uh, I had one question on the uh, appropriations to accounts. There was uh, 15,000, I believe, for office phones and 35,000 for um, other s total station. Yeah, the total station is for accident reconstruction. When we first started our accident reconstruction unit, we bought a, it's basically a uh, construction transit and you take that to the accident scene, place it. Uh, this particular, or the one that we have is starting to show some age. The newer ones can be operated by one person. You set it up and it, it spins and sends out the signal and then you can go to each spot you want to mark for the accident and um, basically uh, we need only one person to come out and operate it versus two. Okay. And uh, did you have a question on another one? No, that's okay. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Oh, um, the, phone, the phones. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure that we weren't putting or spending money on the building you're currently in that could be transferred to the new one. That's correct. And this uh, phone system that we bought, we tried to uh, band-aid our 21-year-old phone system <laughs> to all we could till we got to the point where it would not report to the recorder. The, the line strength wasn't strong enough <laughs> to activate the recorder. So we had to go out and get a system. We leased the system and uh, the, ex the extra money is to get us through our lease payments through the rest of this year. And then that, when the new building opens, this system will literally be picked up and carried into the new new system. Uh, it does everything. It forwards calls from my office to my cell phone, uh, gives you uh, a email that says what your message is. It, it does a lot of things uh, and it's, it uses the cloud also, which was, will give us the ability to pick it up and move it into the new building. Go. I have a question. One of the um, checks written from the auction company um, for $1,053 was um, written to American Finance, but it says it was sold for the Sheriff's Department. What's the paper trail on that? Um, the vehicle uh, had a lien on lien it. On it. Okay. And um, any vehicle that we sell at auction, we have to uh, get it titled in Wicomico County's name first so that when we go to the auction, it has a clean okay. title. That's fine. That, that vehicle was owed some money and rather than bringing that money into the county he paid off the the lien on the vehicle and then gave us the rest thank you that's why it's split like that and if anybody out there kind of wonders that the sheriff's department is using your money wisely i'd say practically every vehicle there are four or five or six of these vehicles 164,000 miles 205,000 miles 189,000 miles over and over again throughout this so these are our deputies who have to get into maybe like a high-speed pursuit and how would you like to do that on a car that's got 180 89,000 miles on it I'm not sure I'd want to go around the block in that but um, I, I've testified hey. in front of this <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've testified in front of this board many times about the call of what we get out of our vehicles once they leave us and generally it's a thousand hours and if you look at the very first one there is Five units, and it was uh, 6,200 hours. So, out of, and those were all police cars because they have police ID numbers on them. Are we now transitioning out of these old vehicles now with a lease program? Yes, our, our fleet is as healthy as it's been in a long time. Yeah, I think your department. I really am not a fan of the leasing program, but I think we had to do it for the sheriff's department more than anyone. Yeah. And I, I just say that because I knew exactly you were. Uh, I know Sheriff Lewis is in here saying he'd have to replace 12 cars a year. For the next, I don't know how many years, just in order to get rid of those, the, the ones with the high mileage. Yes, that is correct. And yeah. this year, of course, we are feeling the the vehicles that were approved July 1 of last year. 
they are not on the street yet. Uh, they're still waiting uplifts. We, they took forever for delivery because of the, the chip issue and the supply chain issue. They are on site and they've been painted, uh, marked, and are waiting uplifting. And of course, everybody got their vehicles at the same time. So all the uplifting companies are very busy. So we're trying to get as many of ours squeezed in as we can. James? Yeah, is that 15,004 phones? Like office phones, or it's it's for the the lease payment for the, the the rest of the year to get us through on that. Okay, okay. It's not for the physical phone. All right. They, they provided the phones in in the contract. Okay. Questions? Yes, yeah. Another quick comment. I didn't want to bring it up in this way, but I might as well. Uh, um, County Executive and a couple of us were at an event uh, last week, and Vehicles for Change. One of the members were there. Um, they actually reached out. They said they wanted to reach out to you, um, or they wanted to reach out to the sheriff's office. I told them to get in touch. Um, but they were they they were looking to potentially take some of our. They were they wanted to set up interest if we were able to um, get rid of vehicles that we were no longer using. When we have the lease program, it's different for the sheriff's office. So I tried to explain that, but um, they're interested in their work locally. Yeah. I've had sheriffs <laughs> as far as Georgia call to request information on this lease program, how it was working with us because they knew our sheriff and he said, well, you need to call this major because he knows. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, a, lot, a, a lot of agencies have gone to it. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Any other? Seeing none. All, all those in favor of resolution 55-2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carry, resolution passes. Thank you, Major. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Ms. Solomon. Next is resolution number 56-2023, approving the operational guidelines for the Wacomico County Natural Resources Conservation Advisory Committee to increase the number of members, modify the membership and term, and to change the meeting date. And we have Dr. Judith Stribling here to answer any questions. I entertain a motion to approve resolution 56-2023. The move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Stribling, did you want to make any comments? I, I don't think it's too necessary. This is just a, um, a measure that will bring us up to speed from where we, we actually are operating now. I will be coming before you um, in the not too distant future, I hope, with some more substantive changes to our operational guidelines. But these are all matters that have been in place up to now, and we just wanted to formalize them. Right. So thank you for your time. It's Josh. It just as, uh, as the council representative on the committee just want to say that we've been going through the process to, uh, to think through with the committee what it looks like. And um, uh, Mr. Wilbur's been great on that. The committee's fully on board with changes and we'll have more to come. But otherwise, this is perfectly fine from them. If you have any questions about the committee, um, I'm happy to answer those. How, how many more members are you looking for? Have a seat so that we can hear you on the mic a little better. Thanks. How, how many more members are you looking to get? We started with nine and we're up to 10 because we added a representative from the city. Oh, okay, okay, and uh, how, uh, how do you get on that commission or committee? Initially, it was set up with a group of people, well, it is set up with a group of people with expertise on natural resources, um, and if someone is interested in joining the committee, you know, we would entertain that. We are going to have a, a vacancy uh, coming up. We, okay. right. we do, so um, yes. And the terms are, did you say they're three years or? Three years, they will be three years after this change is implemented, right? All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you for what you're doing too, because uh, you're always involved in my comic County. Yeah. I've, known, I've known that for <laughs> ages, so we appreciate it. Well, I, I think Mr. Urban's comments are really wonderful this morning about how valuable this county is, and yeah. I feel that way too. Yes, thank you. Um, all those in favor of resolution 56 2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion is carried, resolution passes. Thank you, Dr. Urban. Thank you. Okay, next is resolution number 57-2023. This is to appoint the board of managers of various public drainage associations within Wacomico County. The proposed resolution shows the managers for each public drainage association, so I'm not gonna read the names, but I will point out there's an updated version of the resolution on the council table, and that is because the um, one of the board of managers' <coughs> names, um, there was a typo, it was missing the junior at the end, so we have added that. <laughs> Is that going to require an amendment? No, because I provided the updated version on the council Thank table you. first. I obtain a motion from council to approve resolution 57 2023. So moved. Second. Second. Motion second. second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all, 
All those in favor of resolution 57 2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. Okay, next is resolution number 58 2023. This is to certify the drainage tax roll to the Department of Finance as requested by the Board of Managers of the Public Drainage Associations. And again, the proposed resolution shows the amount um, per acre for crop wood and the minimum amount of the tax levy for each of the public drainage associations. This one, I do believe um, our director of finance, Pam Mullen, is going to propose a um, amendment to, and I'll let her go over that with you. Um, do you need to put it on the floor first? Or? Yes. So you need to introduce it first. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Entertain a motion to approve resolution 58 2023. Okay. Okay. Thank you, because um, <laughs> I, I forgot that I hadn't done it. So it's nice <laughs> Thank to you. Um, so yesterday we were uh, approached by um, a David Mister, who is the regional coordinator for the Maryland Department of Agriculture, and Karen Hoy, who also works for the state of Maryland, about uh, four of the um, drainage uh, ditch uh, amounts. It's very technical, but there's very specific requirements as to how and how much they're allowed to increase their numbers. And four of them increase them beyond the, the amount that they're in theory allowed to have, but they did it in a public meeting. So the uh, state attorney general is actually getting involved as to what next steps. So I am re requesting council to um, approve an amendment to this to strike just four of the amounts at the moment so that the other ones can be enacted and we'll work with the state and come back to council when that has been approved with the state. And so I'm requesting that Allen, uh, Horsebridge, Mill Branch, and Nanacoke be struck from the listing today and that everything else please have it go forward so that we can um, get these enacted. And this was, uh, as I said, a uh, email back and forth actually yesterday afternoon with the state. Has um, these um, associations been uh, advised of this? Literally, it happened at 3, 3.45 yesterday afternoon. Uh -huh. And so we're in the midst of, of doing that. And again, basically from, the, um, I'll read you a part of the email, is that we have discussed the issue with the lead counsel for the Attorney General's <laughs> office, and he suggested the PDAs in question be removed from the agenda for tomorrow's meeting, allowing us time to determine how the issue can be addressed because it was a public meeting, but they didn't do some of the paperwork that is required. So it's, it's kind of caught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so again, it's, it's with the state attorney general. We will reach out to these four today All and right. let them know. I'll probably get questions from one of them. Um, Can we have, on have an amendment? Someone would, would like, someone would like to make the amendment uh, to strike Allen, Horsebridge, Millbridge, and Nanticoke from the uh, resolution. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to amend it. Okay, we have a motion second. 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 Okay, further discussion. Go ahead, Joe. Um, anyway, you're saying that they uh, increase the amount allowed by law? Yes, there's a, there's a specific ratio allowed uh, between cropland and woodland, and um, basically they increase their ratio. And um, without filing some of the paperwork okay. to do that. And so, again, the rock and the hard place is what, from what I'm understanding from this, is they, they did that without the paperwork, but they did it in a public meeting. So the state attorney general is trying to determine which kind of uh, chicken and the egg. Okay, so you, you, you'll, you'll, I'm sure with your um, notification, you'll provide an explanation of why this has happened. We will provide the information that the state that, that provided you us. That you have. Okay. That's good. Yep. All right. And I'll try to explain it if I have any questions, if, if anybody calls me. So the best I can. The question I had was I noticed that maybe two or three, maybe four of these uh, did not do any maintenance whatsoever in 2022. But I wasn't too sure if those were the ones. I couldn't tell who was increasing, who wasn't. Maybe I didn't read it carefully. But um, – I guess maybe that's what we're keeping an eye on, the fact that why would you increase your rates if you didn't have any expenses in 2022? Because some did no maintenance whatsoever. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. I just right. know that, again, these are all approved in a public meeting, so the people have opportunity to say whether or not they want them increased or not. Okay. okay. Any other questions? 
All those in favor of the amendment to resolution 58-2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried, amendment passes. Any further discussion on 58 as amended? Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution 58-2023 as amended say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, Thank you very much. passes as amended. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Mr. President, that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Hurley. <clears throat> Next item we have on the agenda is um, Mr. Mitchell, we're back to you again. This is a legislative bill of 04-2023, the annual budget and appropriation bill of Wacom County, Maryland to adopt the county budget consisting of the operating and capital budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2024. The governmental and enterprise funds budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2024. The anticipated grant funding budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2024. The FY24 position changes budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2024, and the appropriate funds, appropriate, yeah, and, and two appropriate funds for all expenditures for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2023, and ending June 30, 2024. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. At this time, uh, entertain a motion from Council to introduce legislative bill number 04 2023. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We will be holding work sessions on on all of this. Yeah. All those in favor of the introduction of the legislation bill 04 2023 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Introduction passes. Mr. Turley, do we have any further anything further we have to establish tonight? Um, we can have the public hearing on the budget on May the second at six PM. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. <clears throat> 